today is going to look at a change that some people thought they would like to see happen in Canada and the different things that they did in order to make that happen. So today we're launching a series of resources for teachers to use either in civic education class or in other classes as part of the, of the curriculum uh, to engage youth on civic participation, civic engagement and, and voting in elections. It wasn't because of one action. It wasn't because of one person. It was thanks to the contributions of thousands of women and men. This is a, a, one of five new activities that uh, Elections Canada is launching today that we help test in Nova Scotia. And uh, this particular one is looking at uh, ways that students can be involved in civic action. So we use the case study of the women getting the right to vote um, over 100 years ago, and we look at the kinds of things that they did in order to make that happen, and then we try and bring it forward to some of the things that we can do in our day and age, but also as young people. So what are the different kinds of activities that we can get involved in that um, to advocate for change? Tell the room one thing. What did you put on your, what did you put on your sticky notes? Um, more time to get to and from classes. More time to get to and from classes, something you'd like to change at school. My group came up with, we need a longer break and recess. The, the goal is not to uh, deliver information to students, but to have them talk about issues and see how they could get engaged in their community. So it's very interactive. It was pretty eye-opening because, you know, I've never really thought about how I could make a change in like the school for real, you know, or took it seriously. But now it's like I'm really considering joining a student council or doing something like that. We learned that really anyone can make a change and if you want to make a change you should probably speak up about it because most likely you're not the only one thinking about it. Me and my friend were thinking about actually starting a petition too. I'm also really empowered about like women. I think women kind of like take it for granted now so I think we just need to like keep that in mind of how much like work other women have done to get us the right to vote and it's just really important. There's a lot of things that I think aren't like super perfect for students in these schools because like we're not the ones who made the rules or anything like that so I think if we had more of a say uh, then it could work a lot better for us. They can take the ideas that they want to see to be changed uh, and look at what are similar activities that I can do as a 14 or 15 year old um, for the cause that's important to me using this case study as a model um, and kind of driving home the point that there's more than one piece to the puzzle um, when they're becoming engaged citizens. We're working on the long game here. This is tomorrow's voter, so it's an important issue for us. We do know that young Canadians, if they do not vote early, tend not to vote later on in life. And when they do vote early in life, they will vote. There will be voters throughout their life. So it's an important uh, segment of the population for us. Well, I think I'll be a voter in the future because it's important to me to get what I want to happen to happen and to, you know, kind of feel like I'm important to decisions that are made. And um, I'll be a voter because um, women have done so much work for other women to get to the power to vote, but also I want, like, my views to be, like, responded to and have somebody that can make a change for me. It does mean something. You may just think that it won't really go somewhere because I'm just a kid, but you can make a change.